So iPad users can finally rejoice because it looks like the new iPad OS 19 is going to be the biggest update to iPad from a software perspective in a very long time, bringing those kind of Mac OS like features and experiences overall over to the iPad, which is what a lot of people have been wanting for years now. So without further ado, let's talk about what to expect with iPad OS 19, because I think it's going to be an awesome one. So one of the biggest detriments to iPad OS is the lack of multitasking, or at least the lack of proficient and frictionless multitasking. A lot of people love the hardware of the iPad, both internally and externally, from the display, the versatility, the magic keyboard, and everything in between. But a lot of people say that it can't replace their Mac OS computer, whether it is a MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, or even an iMac, because of the fact that iPad OS is so restrictive from a multitasking perspective. Now, I did make a video recently going over Stage Manager in iPadOS 18 and how to really use it properly and how to maximize it from having up to 20 different windows running simultaneously in the foreground and the background. So I'll leave that link down below for you guys to check out. But it looks like iPadOS 19 is going to be the most macOS-like update to iPad in a very long time or for the first time ever. But now before we continue, leave some comments down below of some specific use cases or lack thereof of why you think maybe iPadOS isn't up to snuff compared to macOS. Is it a specific application that doesn't work? Maybe a feature within an application? Is it the multitasking? Is it the file management? Is it all the above? I'm always curious to know because I've seen different kind of reasons along the way of why the iPad can't be someone's main and only computer. But for me, it has been and it has been for the last seven years. Now, I'm not going to say it's been amazing the entire way through where there is a learning curve to learning iPad OS as well as Stage Manager, especially if you're coming from Mac OS and the more traditional style of floating windows and multitasking, but iPad OS has come a long way. But when it comes to pinpointing one detriment or one kind of downfall of iPad OS, it's hard to really pinpoint one specific thing, but it does come down to one thing for me, which is going to be multitasking friction. Everything kind of takes a little bit longer in a few more steps than it would on something like Mac OS. Now I've personally gotten very good at Stage Manager and being able to use multiple windows alongside each other and dragging and dropping, but the fact that iPad OS is still kind of a touch first interface and is trying to be a laptop all at the same time does add some friction in some learning curves and use cases on an app by app and use case by use case basis. But now to the new update to iPad OS 19, I think a lot of this is going to be fixed, especially with a little bit of differentiation from the Pro models and the Air models versus something like the iPad 11 generation and the iPad mini. So let's start off with the design and UI elements first, because we've seen the leaks of iOS 19 and what that's going to look like moving forward with a kind of like glass like feel, the Vision OS type of experience where things are going to seem to be floating at your face in a kind of 3D field, when in reality, of course, it's still gonna be in a 2D pane. So that visual overhaul alone will make iPadOS feel fresher, it'll make it feel newer, and it'll make you feel like you're using some sort of new device, even though you are gonna be using the same exact hardware. But the biggest thing that we noticed here is that Mark Gurman came out a couple days ago saying that he's told that this year's upgrades will focus on productivity, multitasking, and app window management, with an eye on the device operating more like a Mac and it's been a long time coming with iPad power users pleading with Apple to make the tablet more powerful. Because like I've said, I'm rocking an M4 iPad Pro, which cost me close to $2,000 when you consider the fact that I went with one terabyte, the Apple Pencil Pro, the Magic Keyboard. This thing is running the M4 chip. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, which is equivalent to the new MacBook Air, which does have the same M4 chip, as well as the same base 16 gigs of RAM. And you can go up to two terabytes of internal storage. So when it comes to actual compute inside of the iPad Pro, it's got plenty of power to do everything that Mac OS can do. But Apple's always bottlenecked the iPad into this kind of iPhone-like experience with iPad OS, and for some reason, Apple refuses to move on from it because I do think they are afraid of maybe cannibalizing their own market when it comes to iPads versus laptops. Because if you hold an iPad and a laptop side by side, the iPad is more versatile, especially if you're running the same exact operating system. So let's start off with the improvements to multitasking on iPad OS 19 and what that could look like. So Again, the visual improvements alone are going to make multitasking feel a little bit more fluid and just a little bit more like something that's going to be welcoming and something that should be happening versus something that you're forcing with Stage Manager on iPadOS 18. So the floating windows will be able to stack on top of each other, which can already be done with Stage Manager, but again, it'll just look a little cleaner overall and like it's meant to be used that way. Some other improvements to multitasking that could be coming is better RAM management, the ability to maybe have more than just four windows open at the same time, and one big thing from a key standpoint is having multiple audio sources from different windows playing at the same time to one iPad. Because as of right now, even in stage manager mode, if you have maybe a YouTube window playing and an Apple Music window playing, 
it'll default to one or the other. You cannot have two audio sources coming out of the same iPad at the same time because it uses the same protocol as iOS versus the same protocol as macOS. And then we also heard of the floating nav bar when it comes to the new iOS 19, and that could be something that's gonna be prevalent inside of iPadOS. Right now, the dock can't stay stagnant or static when you are in stage manager mode and you are using floating windows and multitasking, but it still doesn't feel like it's meant to be there. It still feels like it's being forced in there and the way that you open up new applications is a little, it lacks intuitiveness and efficiency. So let's say you have Safari open in stage manager mode. If you just click on another item or another app in your dock, it'll completely get rid of Safari, move it over to the recent tabs, and then open up a new kind of window area or a new stage manager area for you to open up new windows. If you wanna have multiple windows open at the same time, you have to drag those into the actual stage manager area in order to open up a secondary window of a certain application, which in iPadOS is counterintuitive because if you drag and hold an application in non-stage manager mode, you're entering wiggle mode, you're entering the home screen edit mode, and it's just something that you have to relearn yourself or teach yourself that there's two different functions to dragging and dropping applications depending on what mode you're in, whether you're in stage manager mode or in regular iPadOS mode. So having those floating bars in that new floating tab menu or window can be great for a new dock, can be great for a new tab menu within an application. So if you have maybe a persistent window that shows up during stage manager mode where you can quickly swap between different applications or open up new applications without having to kind of reteach yourself a behavior that you've already known. And lastly, when it comes to the applications themselves, there is already iPadOS versions of certain iOS applications and macOS applications, but for the most part, they aren't dedicated or made specifically for the iPad. They usually take a version of the iOS application, port it over, and they can just export it as an actual iPadOS application just to make it larger so you're not using an iOS app on iPad. There are some applications that are specifically made for the iPad, like LumaFusion, like the Blackmagic Camera Viewfinder, and things of that nature, but I now think developers will have an incentive to make iPad-specific applications, which can enhance and use the power of the iPad and the internals to really have a desktop level or a pro level type of application, which are far and in between. There are some pro level applications like Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, Procreate, LumaFusion, Final Cut Pro, but overall, a lot of these are a dime a dozen. With the millions of apps that are in the App Store, there should be more iPad related applications. For example, to this day, we are in 2025 and there is no Instagram dedicated application for the iPad, which I think is a huge miss because I can see them parlaying that into maybe an editing mode or some way that they can maybe create Instagram Reels or Instagram Photos, edit them directly on the iPad app and then completely import them or export them into the actual Instagram application all from one application, which I think Instagram should do immediately. So a lot of applications like that will now be able to take advantage of the power because the pro level multitasking and productivity measures will be something that now will be readily available and easier to use overall to iPad users making developers want to code for that as opposed to just porting over their iOS app into iPadOS. So overall, I'm very excited to see what Apple brings at WWDC with iPadOS 19. I know I've been disappointed in the past, like I know Stage Manager came out, I thought it was gonna be something that was absolutely amazing with iPadOS 16. And it ended up being not that great up until around iPadOS 17 and then iPadOS 18, where it's kind of finally come into form and I actually use it more so than not using Stage Manager. But a lot of people still think Stage Manager is weird. It has no real purpose. It makes it more confusing than normal. Some apps work, some apps resize, some apps don't resize. So there's a lot of variability that needs to be fixed from an app to app basis. And that's what I think iPadOS 19 will bring. It'll bring uniformity across applications. It'll bring a standard for iPad specific applications. It'll make multitasking and productivity a lot more frictionless. And of course, all the UI and visual changes will make it be kind of a breath of fresh air and a little bit of a change to iPadOS 19, which has been the same since iPadOS 13, basically. But that will just about do it for this video, everybody. If you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end, as you can see right here. And if you guys want to watch more videos like this one, definitely check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. Let me know in the comment down below what you think of iPadOS 19 and what exactly you would want out of an upgraded version on every single iPad. But that'll do it, everybody. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace.